Welcome team. Hey, hi. So welcome team. Uh, hopefully another interesting day. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is, let me share my screen. Give me a moment. Here we go. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about what is called as uh, n-gram language models. Uh, I think two years back, if somebody talked of language models, I think it would have been some esoteric term nobody cared about or rather would care about. But things have dramatically changed over the last year, year and a half. Now, everybody knows about language models, thanks to ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is essentially a large language model. So language models have been around for a long while. It's not as if they were never there. They were always there. Uh, as more and more data got plugged into the internet. The sophistication of these models got better and better. And what we're gonna to look today is what is called as a classical language model. I'm, I'm using the word classical because, I mean, this is, this is like, I mean, if you have learned physics, um, they say Newtonian physics is classical physics before Einstein came and, you know, turned everything around. It is something similar. So what you are going to learn today is classical language model. The kind of stuff that people used to call language model before the advent of, uh, you know, large language models, which use neural networks extensively. So the classical language model is not based on a neural network. It is all probabilistic modeling. Uh, in fact, we're going to deal with conditional probability again. It'll keep popping up, you know, every now and then. Okay. So some interesting use cases. We already, you know, you, you may not have noticed uh, when you use your mobile phone and you look for, you, you type something, then you see those options, right, for correction. Now, how do you think it, you know, from where do they come up? It's not magic. So there's some model that must be running behind the scenes for you to see those options that will allow uh, you to correct your spelling, sometimes your grammar, etc., etc., etc. Right? So, so some interesting use cases: predicting the next word somebody is going to say. That's a use case. So I asked this question in the channel. Please turn your homework. So what's the next word, right? So large, I mean, language models can allow, and it allows us to predict the next word. Speech recognition, identifying words and noisy, ambiguous input. So we'll take two examples here. I will be back soonish, or I will be bassoon dish. Now, of course, we know if we have to recognize, we'll certainly recognize this as I will be back soonish and not I will be bassoon dish. But when the environment is noisy, it's difficult to identify which sentence was spoken. Language models will help you to identify them. Spelling grammar correction. So there are two midterms. Evidently, the spelling is incorrect. We're not supposed to use T-H-E-I-R, but rather we are supposed to use, use T-H-E-R-E. It allows us to correct spelling and grammar. Augmentative and alternative communication system. So this is like, uh, this is for, you know, people who may have challenges to, you know, while speaking or rather unable to speak. 
So you have augmentative and alternative communication systems for them, where maybe on, you know, just using your eye gaze or perhaps certain other motion, it should be able to figure out, uh, you know, it, it'll rather give you a list of words that you can pick and choose from and then, you know, allow you to communicate. So this is again, another use case. What are we trying to do with language models? What we're going to do here is we're trying to solve two related problems. Given a sequence of words, W1, W2, all the way up to WM, we're asking this question, what is the probability of this sequence? Okay. Uh, for example, Let, let me ask a question. So let's let's take this, I mean, a commonly, the most common three words that all of us learn when we, we are young, right? I love you. How, how, so you have a probability associated with this sentence, I love you. Can somebody tell me what would be the, what would the, I mean, what the probability would be for the sentence Love you, I. If Sirisha was talking, she must know that she was on mute. Zero. All oh, right. Okay. You were on mute. Right. <laughs> yes. So the probability is zero. But Sirisha, how did you ascertain the probability? I mean, that will not happen, right? Okay. What do you mean by that will not happen? How, how, do, how do we know that it will not happen? There must be a method to the madness, right? So what is that method? Can't somebody just say, love you, I? I mean, that is not proper, right? Okay, not proper. That is right. But how would, how would an algorithm even know that it's not proper? This is not Oxford English Dictionary, right? Mm -hmm. So how would it even know? <laughs> You're but talking from. <laughs> Sorry, somebody was saying something. Who's that? Kyle. Ah, yeah, Kyle, go ahead. Yeah, the algorithm would, would have not seen such a sequence in its training model. Correct. Exactly. The algorithm would, wouldn't have you know seen such a sequence in its training model. So where is this, you know, where is the data set coming from? Typically, if I have to ask this question and if you have to just imagine, I, I give you the freedom. You know, you play God. You ask for it, I'll give it to you. All right. So, what is your, what would your ask be? What would your ask be when it comes to the data set? Anybody? Just, just feel free. Uh, let's say I'll give it to you. I'm playing God here. So, what would your ask be? So it should include all the patterns, right? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm offering you. Tell me what you want. Clearly specify what you want. Let's say I'm able to give it to you. What exactly would you ask me? Anybody? Just so run your imagination wild, folks. Come on. A engineer. <laughs> no. I, no, no. My question is, you want to train this model, right? Yeah. To train the model, you need data. So what sort of data would you need to train this model? I mean, it should be like universal set, like which includes all patterns, everything. Okay, so where will we get all these patterns? Good, you're right, but let's define it a little better, you know? You're right, but improvise your answer. I mean, again, we should rely on some, some dictionary sort of thing or... Closer. Improvise. Google search. Okay, improvise. So can't we say, number one, every single published English book ever. Correct? We need that. Number okay. two, anything and everything that was written on the internet, we need that. I think that's sufficient, right? So if somebody would, you know, if somebody were to give me that sort of information, 
then I can determine this probability. And I think it's reasonable to expect that such a probability, I mean, of the probability of I, you, am, would be zero because I, I don't, I mean, even, even those who have very limited understanding of the English knowledge will get I love you right. Very few people get that wrong, right? So I don't see that getting printed anywhere on the internet or in any book for that matter. Okay. So, so that's one problem that we're trying to solve. You know, given a sequence of words, what is the probability of that sequence? The next problem that we're looking to solve is given a sequence of words, what is the probability of the next word? So <clears throat> again, conditional probability, which means given W1, W2, all the way up to Wm minus 1. Okay, this is given. What is the probability of the word Wm? Okay. Again, nothing changes. We again need the entire corpus, every published book in the world, you know, uh, anything and everything that is that has been written on the internet. We need all that. Now, of course, uh, it's it's quite interesting because if you think of the evolution of large language models over a period of time, it, it has actually become much better as our internet usage increased exponentially. Because just imagine if you were a Google or a Microsoft or whatever, you know, they have access to pretty much everything that is published on the internet. Well, that's a lot of data. Right. And that serves as a big corpus for them to train their algorithms on. All that they have to do is they'll have to figure out a way to run their algorithms on that kind of data, data set. Right. So so which which means when I mean when, at, at the advent of internet, it could have been quite a struggle to get a corpus. So you you know, one would have to figure out a way to, you know, probably you know take a bunch of books and then you'll have to convert that into machine readable format, blah, 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 for us to get a reasonable corpus. But these days it's much easier because for firms such as Google and the Microsoft of the world, they have access to the entire, corp I mean, a large corpus of uh, words and sentences. So that makes it easier for them to run algorithms. All right. Anyways, but again, we don't have that kind of luxury. So which means we would work with a limited corpus a small set of sentences, and then we'll try to figure out these probabilities. Okay, so two probabilities that we're looking at. One is the sequ I mean, uh, given a sequence of words, what is the probability of the sequence? And number two, given a sequence of words, what is the probability of the next word? These are the two problems that would interest us. All right. Give me a moment. So, models that assign probabilities to sequence of words are called language models or LMs. So now you know what LLMs are. That's large language models, all right? So we are still restricting ourselves to the world of LMs, not LLMs. To get to LLMs, we need neural networks. And to get to neural networks, preferably, we need to understand logistic regression, which we'll come to a little later, all right? I mean, of course, after this, we'll delve into logistic regression. So we are still in the world of LMs and models that assign probabilities to sequences of words are called language models. What we shall do today is we shall introduce a simple model that assigns probabilities to a sequence of words. It's called the n-gram. So you have what is called as a one-gram or a unigram. It's a one-word sequence. A two gram or a bigram, a two word sequence, a three gram or a trigram, a three word sequence, so on and so forth. All right. Uh, our focus would be to estimate the probability of the last word of an n gram given the previous words. We'll, we'll talk of bigrams. It's easier to understand. We'll come to that. Okay. So basically, n gram basics. The probability of a word given some history. So let's try to calculate the probability of P of 
the given its water is so transparent that all right so this is give me a moment what's wrong with my yeah so we're trying to figure out this so we'll start with basic understanding of conditional probability so let's do that give me a moment so we know p of a given b is equal to what is it anyone p of, p of a, a intersection b uh, divided by p of b all right b divided by what's p wrong of with p. my yeah yeah give me a moment folks p of b all right so that's precisely what we're doing here as well we're trying to figure out probability of the given its water is so transparent that right so we're trying to figure out this probability so what are going what are we going to do we're going to i mean imagine this to be a and this to be b so we can say p of a intersection b divided by p of b all right so that's that's this now just imagine how do we calculate this but before that we see before that how do you know it is the that's the probability that i want i don't know whether it's see look at this question the question is probability of a word given the history now it's quite possible that this probability this could be zero but i want to calculate this probability it could be zero it could be say 0 0.005 whatever but i want to calculate that the question is how would i do that right so how do we calculate this and this any ideas i want you folks to think let me also write something down it's water is so trans excuse me folks i'm i'm getting used to this transparent that okay this is the text and then we are adding The question is, we want to figure out this probability. It's water is so transparent that D divided by probability of it's water is so transparent that. How do we figure it out? Think, folks. How do you think you can figure it out? Okay, let me ask this question. I, I search the internet, okay? And I get, say, I get this whole thing five times, okay? After searching the internet, which means I get its water is so transparent that the, I get that five times. Then, I again search the internet and I get, I mean, this whole thing, but instead of the, I think something is wrong with this. I get and, and I get that 10 times. That is all that I get in the internet. Let's say, now can you tell me what is the probability? You understand what I'm what we're getting in a sense look at this it's water is so transparent that d i get that five times on the internet and then it's water is so transparent that and i get 10 times on the internet that's all i don't get anything else on the internet now tell me what is this probability
it's very easy folks it's just okay so abhinav says it's 5 by 15 anyone else with any other answer give it a shot folks come on five by the total words in the corpus okay why total words in the corpus look look at what is the question the question here is given this the denominator is you know this is given given that this sequence occurred what is the probability that the next word is d that's the question so just look at this here is a sequence of words following that i managed to figure out the word d five times on the internet then i did another search i managed to find the same sequence of words but this time around i didn't get d i got and and i got and i managed to find 10 such instances on the internet my question is what is this probability now isn't it 5 by 15 why because there are 15 sentences that interest us isn't it do you agree there are only 15 sentences i don't know what's wrong with this there are 15 sentences that interest us 5 here 10 here so totally 15 out of which five sentences are the ones where this particular sequence is followed by the word d right in the rest of the sentences this sequence is there i see its water is so transparent that but then it is not followed by the word excuse me it's not followed by the word d but instead it's followed by the word and correct so so totally there are 15 sentences that would interest me because all 15 sentences have this text its water is so transparent that that text is there in all 15 sentences but out of that only five sentences have the word d following the sentence and the rest 10 have a different word right so the probability of p where you know uh, we are, okay, let me put it this way the probability of seeing the word d followed i mean d following the sentence its water is so transparent that is 5 by 15 all right now just imagine folks if you google for such a sentence you think you'll get something so easily just imagine a sentence you know given the grammatical structure if you google for it and i mean i i just came up with some random example here i said there are five such instance, sentences on the internet there are 10 such instances i mean sentences on the internet and then i said okay 5 by 15 job done but well, that's a very fictitious example would you really get something like that on the internet it's doubtful right you're not going to get the exact sentence that you want on the internet and you want that multiple times you want that to occur multiple times for you to calculate a definite probability right so you're not going to get something so easily so the moral is we need some clever ways to tackle this problem all right so let's let's think of what are the clever ways to do that okay so let me go back to the presentation all right 
looks very onerous, complicated, but it's very simple. Okay, let me explain this. Let's define P of W1 comma W2 comma W3 all the way up to W1 as the joint probability or intersection of words occurring in a sequence. So for example, its water is so transparent that the, okay? So in this case, W1 is its, W2 is water, W3 is, give me a moment, I'll just change to, All right. So W1 is its, W2 is water, W3 is is, W4 is so, W5 is transparent, W6 is that, and W7 is the. All right. What do we want? Probability of W1 to W7. All right. Now, let's go back to basic probability. Okay, I'm going to ask a simple question. Probability of AB. Can somebody tell me how do I write this in conditional terms? In conditional probability terms. Probability, probability. of A given B into probability of B. Okay. Probability of A given B into probability of B, all right? Now, I'm gonna complicate this problem a little more. Probability of A, B, C. Uh, don't expand it too much. Let's do a basic expansion. Start with a, you know, a very basic expansion. How do we do this? Can we can we keep A as one, B C as another, and now tell me how do we do it? You understand what I'm saying? Keep A as one event, B intersection C as another event. So this is one event, this is another event. Now tell me, how do I write this in terms of conditional probability? Uh, probability of A given BC, probability of BC. Okay, probability of A given B, excuse me folks, hmm? BC into? Into probability of BC. Into probability of? BC. BC. Right? Yeah, I see. Nothing has changed, folks. Do you see that? What I've, what we have done here is think of this as one event, BC as another event. So this was like your old B. Instead of B, you have a BC here. So it's like A given B multiplied by probability of B, right? Now let's focus on this. Now expand this. What is this? Probability of B given C. B given C multiplied by? Probability of C. Probability of C. So can we say this is nothing but probability of A given BC. So basically probability of A, BC is probability of A given BC. Then you take BC, expand that, BC, B given C multiplied by probability of C. All right. So let me clear this. Let's go back to what we have in the, the presentation now. So probability of W1 to W7. Can somebody explain what am I doing here? I'm basically interpreting W1 to W6 as one single event, right? 
this is like probability of a given b probability of a given b into probability of b right this whole w1 to w6 is like a b all right and w7 is like an a so probability of a given b multiplied by probability of b is equal to probability of ab all right then what do i do i just take this this bit here and then i expand how do i do that w6 given <coughs> w1 to w5 multiplied by probability of w1 to w5 can somebody explain this so let's okay so let's let's do it at one stage i, I want somebody to help me out so let's say i have just to just for me to understand whether you've understood or not so let's say probability of w5 w4 w3 w2 and w1 let us say this is an event this entire thing is an event and w5 is an event now can somebody tell me how to expand this in conditional probability terms probability of w5 okay uh by w4 to 1 be very careful it's not by when you say by uh, given it's given given, given. Hmm. all right w1 to w2 w3 w4 Into multiplied by probability of w4 to 1 okay w1 w2 w3 and w4 right so and that's what i've done here i've basically expanded this at each stage until i came to a stage where i have p of w1 w2 which is nothing but w2 given w1 into probability of w1 okay so so if you just plug in these expressions what you'll get is this whole thing becomes w7 given w1 to w6 w6 given w1 to w5 you keep doing that all the way up to a stage where you just have probability of w1 okay so what we've done is we basically use what is called as a chain rule of conditional probability where we you know just a while back we did p of abc is p of a given bc multiplied by p of bc and we expanded p of bc as p of b given c multiplied by p of c so on and so forth right so that's called as a chain rule of conditional probability uh now good we've done all this but what the hell do we do with this can we even determine something like this does this make matters any easier for example let's take this case i've said look prop calculating probability of w1 to w7 is very very difficult so i said let's reduce it this way but then w7 given w1 to w6 is that easy even that isn't too easy correct even calculating something like that is very very difficult because to do that you need to find sentences where you have w1 to w6 available together what is w1 to w6 can somebody tell me what is that sentence it's water is so transparent that exactly now you you need to find so many you know instances of such a sentence on the internet or in on or in books for you to even attempt or take a stab at p of w7 given w1 to w6 so the fact is yes we've used conditional probability to do something like this but it doesn't make matters any easy for us so what is the way out and this is where the idea of n gram comes into picture okay so what is this <coughs> so what you're saying is the intuition of n gram model is that instead of computing the probability of word given its entire history we can approximate the history by just the last few words okay so a unigram i haven't talked about unigram here because that's the most simplest of models a unigram model assumes so if you go here 
it assumes this entire probability p of w7 given w1 to w6 is p of w7 itself okay so let me for example a unigram model okay so we'll start with unigram so p of w7 given w1 to w6 is excuse me is equal to p of w7 all right what does it mean so let's go back to what w7 is so what's w7 here D. The, the, D. Right. Yeah, the, the, whatever. Okay. So, so probability of the given blah, 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 blah is equal to probability of the. That's unigram model for you. Now, very crude model, isn't it? Why? You just, you know, you don't really care about what were the preceding words. You're saying the probability of the given any preceding word, set of words, is the probability of the that occurs on the internet. Or it is a probability of the that is there in, you know, in your books, for instance, right? You don't really care about uh, what preceded the. You don't really care about it. If you don't care about it, that's called the unigram model. Okay, now, <clears throat> now I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to give the definition for bigram, which is the following. It says the probability of this entire expression is, I mean, rather when you look at the history, you just look at the preceding word and nothing else. So if that's the case, just the preceding word, folks, so if that's the case, W1 to W1, sorry, W7 given W6 is equal to, can somebody now tell me what would that 30. be? No, no, just look at this, folks. I'm saying we, we are now using the bigram model. Unigram, we understand. It's probability of W7. Now I'm saying with the bigram model, the probability of this is dependent on the preceding word, just one preceding word. So what would that be? How would I write w this? W7 given W6. Exactly. Given W6. That's it. All right. That's the bigram model. So this is bigram. Now, now somebody help me with trigram. Not Sirisha. Was it Ravi, is it? Who was the one who was, he keeps answering to it. Someone else. What would this be? I'm, I'm talking of trigram model now, which means preceding two words. W7 given W6, W5. Exactly. That's trigram for you. All right. Now this is so this is unigram, this is bigram, and this is trigram, OK? So going back to the presentation. So a bigram model approximates the probability of a word given all previous words, say p, w7, given w1 to w6, by using the conditional probability of the previous word. That's the approximation. Uh, so anybody? Probability of the given Walden's Pond's water is so transparent that approximates to what? Probability of the given? That. 
that exactly so this this would be probability of the given that you don't really care about walden's ponds water is so transparent it doesn't really matter all right trigram model approximates the probability of a word given all the previous words say again p w7 given w1 to w6 by using the conditional probability of the preceding two words probability of w7 given w6 w5 all right uh, now i think i have some notes here i'll give some example so let's solve this problem so this is a very you know a mathematical expression but forget let's not worry too much about the mathematical expression let's just focus on a question okay look at this look at this problem here uh, and the occurs five times in a corpus okay and the occurs five times in a corpus and who occurs four times and then occurs eight times there is no other occurrence of and plus any other word other than the who and them okay D did you understand this you know the the framing of this problem here if if somebody didn't understand please ask a did somebody chat sorry give me a moment or a guru okay fine question is what is the probability of the given and assuming a bigram model so let me just write it somewhere let's go back to the board so we're saying and followed by the word the or the occurs how many times five times in a corpus okay and followed by the word who occurs four times and followed by the word then occurs eight times the corpus the question is what is the probability of sorry sorry give me a moment this is a eraser give me a sec folks what is the eraser so this is sorry yep so one the question is the probability of the given and so first things first how would you approach this so a given b what is the first step let's expand this so what would this be b uh, intersection and okay so how do i write this mm. can i write this as what's wrong with my b of and intersection b give me one moment folks i don't know something is wrong with my is sensitive let's do it on excel folks something is wrong 
So we're trying to figure it out. I'll just snip it. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out the probability of the given and, right? So how do we write that? Uh, P of and intersection P. Okay, and D, correct? Yes, uh, divided by P of and. Okay, divided by P of and. All right, now how do we proceed? This is my corpus, folks. I don't have anything else. This is my English language. Now tell me. Five by five plus four plus eight. Exactly. Correct. Why? Because if you look at the corpus here, <coughs> following and, there are only three possibilities. I, it, and can be followed by a the, it can be followed by a who, it can be followed by a then. And here are the frequencies of occurrences, right? Uh, and can be followed by the five times, who four times, then eight times, right? So which means totally the word and can occur eight plus four plus five or 17 times, right? Now, the combination and and the can occur five times. So, so what we're doing here is, in fact, we're not quite figuring out the numerator probability and denominator probability because that can be very complicated. Instead, we do it, you know, we do a trick where we are saying, look, this is the corpus. There could be a lot of words in the corpus, from, but from our perspective, what matters is the word and, correct? We, are not, we don't care about every single word on the internet. What matters to us is the word and. And in our world, <coughs> and can be followed only by three words, the, who, and then. The, I mean, you, you get to see the word the following and five times. You get to see the word who following and four times. And you get to see the word then following and eight times. So this probability is simply nothing but five by 17. All right. Any questions so far? Okay. I presume no questions. Now, uh, Now, whatever I just said, it's if you think about it, look at this expression here. So W1 is the previous word. W1 is the word that you're interested in now. And look at this. This C basically means a count. The count of the previous word. In our world, it was and. And this is the combination, N minus 1, N. So and D. So it's a count of and the divided by count of and, all right? So I just demonstrated that through an example, and this is basically the, the I mean, some algebra to, of course, we, 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 you know, we're working with the world of mathematics, so uh, symbols matter. So it's, so this is a symbolic expression of the same, all right? Okay, now, so we know that uh, <clears throat> unigram. You don't, you know, when you calculate the probability of, uh, I mean, when the model that is used is a unigram model, you don't quite bother about the previous words or rather the occurrence of the previous words. So let's work with this corpus. The corpus is as follows I am sorry, comma, Dave, full stop. I am afraid. I can't do that full stop. So, 
each it say this says when tokenized we have 15 tokens can somebody look at the corpus and tell me what exactly are these tokens maybe a words or a separators like comma yeah everything is a token i is a token apostrophe m is a token sorry comma dave and then the full stop each one of them is a token all right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 12 because can't has two tokens there all right uh, 13 14 15 all right and what what do they mean when they say 11 types Uh, they're unique tokens. Exactly. The unique ones. 11. All right. Now, look at this question here. The probability of I am sorry, Dave, versus probability of comma, am I, full stop, sorry, Dave. Which one is more likely? Which one is a more likely sentence among the two? Which one is a more likely sentence among the two? First things first, what is your gut feel? Which one is a more likely sentence? Which one first is a likely... Well, of course, it's first one, right? Because that's that's a more meaningful sentence as compared to the second. But then all of us, when we, when, you, when, when we come up with such an answer, we are using our knowledge of the English language. Now, of course, this model doesn't have any understanding of English. So what is it supposed to do? It's supposed to use this corpus to figure out which one is the more likely sentence. Now, let me ask this question. What is the probability? We're working with Unigram, folks. What is the probability of I? Three. Probability, right? Yeah, 3 by uh, 15. 3 by 15. Uh, what is the probability of apostrophe M? 2 by 15. 2 by 15, right? Now, just think about it. When I'm calculating this probability, so imagine this to be, so let's, let's go back to the Unigram model. So what does the Unigram model say? I'll, I'll, I'll give my shot again, see if this works. Okay, it's okay. Probability of, say, W1 all the way up to W7. Can somebody tell me, in the Unigram world, what would this be? Give me an expression for this, folks, in a Unigram world. P of W7. Okay. Unigram. It is just P of W7, right? Think, 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 think. Look at no, this. Multiply by P of W6, W5, w five, W4. W5, W4, exactly. Why? Ah, yeah. Because we know. Look at this, folks. Okay. Just go back to this. We know P of W1 to W7 is the expression at the bottom. But the Unigram world tells us, I mean, that world tells us that all this previous stuff, W1 to W6, sorry, excuse me, folks, I don't know why this nonsense pops up. W1 to W6, W1 to W5, all, all that doesn't really matter, right? That's the Unigram world. So, going back, now can you tell me into what p of w12 correct w6 p of w5 all the way up to p of w1 would you agree in the unigram world because what we are doing here it's simple we have this expression we know that but then Unigram world tells us that all this previous stuff doesn't really matter. So which means P of W7 given W1 to W6 is P of W7. 
P of W6 given W1 to W5 is P of W6, so on and so forth. Okay. Now, let's go back to this. Use your intuition. L look at this and look at this, folks. In terms of tokens, are we seeing different tokens here? Or are we seeing the same set of tokens? Look at it closely. Look at this sentence and this sentence. Are we seeing a different set of tokens or are we seeing the same set of tokens? Same, yes, same set of tokens. Same set of tokens. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask a question. Unigram world. Okay. Probability of this sequence W1, W2, W3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Probability of W2, W7, 1, W6, W5. W4. This is one sentence. This is another sentence. Question. Do they have the same tokens here? They do, right? Basically, they mean the same thing, right? Are in the Unigram world, are these equal or are these not equal? In the unigram world. They are equal. equal. Why? Why? Because in unigram world, so we are multiplying each uh, token probability. So exactly. it will be same. Exactly. It will be the same. So it, this is kind of represented. So don't you see in the unigram world, of course, I can determine the probability of each of these tokens. But if I'm using the same token, then this probability and this probability would, ex sorry, this probability and this probability would exactly be the same. Would you agree, folks? Right? So it's sort of represented very interestingly. Let me see if I can pull up that. Uh... Let me see. Give me one minute, folks. Let's see if I have that. Uh... Don't have it. Nope, I don't. Not here. I think it was somewhere else. So, anyways, doesn't really matter. Uh, so you got it right. You know where if we're working with the world of unigrams, uh, this probability and this probability would exactly be the same. So my follow-up question would be. Can Unigram be a valid model that will help us to get close to English grammar? You know, the real English grammar. Will it help us get anywhere close? No, it's not. no right? Evidently not. So if you if you go to give me a moment. Uh, I think we discussed Where is that? Give me a moment. So the chat today. So generating Shakespeare. So what you see on top is a Unigram model where the the learning algorithm learned <coughs> Shakespeare from the corpus of Shakespeare's works, and then it generated. <coughs> these words from that corpus. 
So if you look at the one at top, that's that uses a unigram model. And evidently you can see it's nowhere close to forget Shakespeare, it is not anywhere close to grammar that we understand. Okay. So let's go back to the presentation. <laughs> Now we're going to deal with what is called as bigrams. So what is bigrams? We understand that it comprises of sequences where you have two tokens. All right. So for example, I am, am sorry, sorry, comma, comma, Dave, Dave, full stop. Okay. I'll, I'll come to the, there's a tricky bit there. I am I am afraid, afraid I, I can, can, can't rather, because it's can't and apostrophe S, and then int do, do that, and that, full stop. So which is what you see here. You see bigrams here, <coughs> and that counts. Now, it can get a bit tricky because, if you look at this, there is no way for us to know when the sentence starts and the when, when the sentence ends, isn't it? Look at this, folks. If I get this corpus, how do I even know that this is where the sentence ends or you know this is where the sentence starts? So the way to handle that is we need to mark these sentences. So you have these markers. So imagine this to be like the start of the sentence and this to be the end of the sentence, all right? Now we're trying to figure out, let's take this case. Probability of, we're gonna figure out the probability of this. So let's get your pencil and paper, folks. Let's try to calculate this now, all right? So let's start with this. What is the first bigram that you're gonna work with? What is the first bigram? We're going to calculate multiple probabilities, right? Yeah. What's the first bigram? Start with the start from the you know start of the sentence. So don't you see I the am... don't you see the first bigram would be wait. I give a start. Give me a moment. Let me just. I hope this works. So let me just uh, snipe it. Snip it. I think it works. Let's see. So let's say I want to figure out this. Okay. Now, I am going to figure out the probability of don't you see that's the first bigram? Correct? Start of a sentence followed by the letter I. Can somebody tell me how can I write this? Probability of start of sentence given. Start of no, no, sentence. No, be careful. I. No, no. It's okay, I, I given start, given of, start sentence. of sentence I. Okay. And then? No, it should. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I I'm given sorry. start of sentence I both right. This is bigram. No, right? no. Sorry. Wait a minute. Sorry. Let me just. I'll just delete this. What's wrong with this? Okay. Let me just. Let's do it on Excel itself. It's better. So what are we trying to figure out? So let's go back here. Or let's take a simple one. Okay. Instead of starting with this, let us say we want to calculate. Um, give me a moment. 
So l- l- I have some answers here, but let's see. Let's see why it is so. Okay. Now, uh, we know that when we have a sentence like this, how many words are there? Let's call this, or rather, how many tokens are there? W1, W2, W3, W4, W5, W6, W7, W8. I see eight tokens. Do you see more in the sentence? How many, how many tokens do you see? I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Does anyone see more than eight? No, eight. eight, right? Okay. So now, what are we trying to figure out? We're trying to figure out probability of W1 all the way up to W8. Now, can somebody expand this for me? Given we're using a we know in the unigram world it would have been probability of w eight one, no seven. let's let's do that you know in the unigram world into probability of w7 all the way up to probability of w1 now in the bigram world what would it be probability of w8 by 7 to 1 Okay. W8 given? By seven. Given 7 to 1. I know, but it's bigram now. Uh, That's the whole seven. expansion. So seven just seven. go back to this, folks. Just go back to. Sorry. Just go back to this. It just that instead of 7, you have 8 here. So it's 8 words. <coughs> you have this whole expression. But we have converted that into a bigram. So which means probability of W7 given W1 to W6 is probability of W7, of W7 given W6. W6. Mm-hmm. Right? So just remember that and tell me. So W8 given? W7. W7. Multiplied by? Probability of W7 given W6. W6. Ta, 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 ta. Probability of W2 given W1 multiplied by probability of W1. Correct? Is that clear? Right? That's that's how you would expand this, isn't it? Right? Now, now let's go back to that question. There's a question. So I'll have to figure out this probability. So what am I supposed to do? So don't you see, I'll have to figure out P of I given start of the sentence multiplied by probability of am given I multiplied by probability of sorry given am multiplied by probability of comma given sorry multiplied by probability of Dave given comma, multiplied by the probability of full stop given Dave, and finally multiplied by the probability of end of sentence given full stop, right? So let's take one example. Of course, probability of W1 is probability of the start of the sentence. There's no difference at all. You see, probability of start of sentence is the same. So forget that. Let's focus on the first probability of I given start of sentence. I given start of sentence. So what we want to calculate, let's start with probability of I given start of sentence. Now, let's go back to this. Can somebody tell me what would that be? How would I calculate it? I given start of sentence. Okay. Again, if it's confusing, expand this. Expand it, folks. A given B. What is probability of A given B? I into start of sentence by probability of start. Let's of write sentence. it the other way around. Start okay. of sentence followed it, by I. By. All right, divided by probability of start of sentence. Sentence. Right? All right, mm-hmm. correct. All right. 
sorry probability of start of sentence all right how do we calculate this remember the counts folks the counts logic that we did a while back <coughs> look at these two sentences okay let me put it this way how many times do i see a start of sentence how many bigrams do i see where i have the start two. of sentence two correct so can somebody tell me what are those let me just copy this whole thing so that all right so can somebody tell me what are those bigrams where i see start of sentence <clears throat> start of sentence followed by what i don't i see that don't i see that you're right start of sentence followed by i and how many times do i see that two times two times correct and that's it i don't see any other word that follows the start of sentence isn't it the on, the only word that follows the start of the sentence is the word i so now tell me what is this probability one one because in the numerator the count is two <coughs> the denominator is also two correct let's solve another problem okay let's pick up okay am i i'm just taking another example here am i'm going to figure out probability of am given i okay by the way apostrophe m is am all right now tell me expand this for me now this is probability of i given i intersection app all right uh okay i am divided by, by probability of i okay i so what do we do now look for in this corpus look for all i's look for all i's first all bigrams that starts with i can you help me with that what are the bigrams in this corpus that starts with i remember folks when i use the word bigram it's a two word combination which are consecutive right you know it's continuous of course tell me the list of bigrams here that start with the word that starts with the word i i, I am. am all right I am. i am how many how many times does it occur twice all right and then i, I can. can i can how many times does does that occur once once. once absolutely now tell me what is this probability Two by three. Okay, Sabari says it's two by three. Does anyone else has a different answer? Even if you have the same answer, just say the same thing. It's okay. At least I would know that people are thinking. Or if somebody has a different answer, feel free to take a shot at it. I thought the same answer too. All right. Okay. Fine. Can Sabari? Can you tell me why? Is your answer two by three? Uh, because uh, I am occurred twice, and uh, I occurred thrice. Uh, exactly. Two times in I am, and once in I can. Exactly correct. So what do we do? Here are the bigram combinations I am and I can. According to this corpus, these are the only combinations possible. Bigrams possible, right? <laughs> Though in reality, if you look at a larger corpus, there could be. many combinations that go with i but in this corpus there are only two possible combinations and here are the frequencies so basically what we are saying is i am occurs twice and i can occur in bigrams thrice twice in i am and once in i can so this probability is 2 by 3 okay let's pick up one more example okay 
I want someone else to take a shot at this. Sorry, given am. First, start with the start with expansion of the conditional probability. Anyone? Not the usual suspects, someone new. P of am data section, sorry. Oh, no, no, you, Rahul, I'm hearing a lot from you. I want to, I want to hear from someone else. Not Madhumita, not Sabari, not, I think, Jaren also answered. We also had Kyle very answered. Someone else, folks, give it a shot. Probability of, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, intersection M by probability of M. Okay, so we want to flip it, make it I'm sorry. Because which is the preceding word? When you do sorry. I'm given. No, no. What I'm asking is, which is the subsequent word and which is the preceding word here? When you say sorry given am, which is the next word and which is the preceding word? Remember here, W8 given W7 is, what does it mean? Am. Ah, exactly. So can I write this as probability of am? Sorry, correct? Divided by probability of what? Probability of am, sorry, divided by probability of? Am. Am, all right. Sorry, am. Now tell me, just go through this corpus. What are the different bigrams that start with the word am? I'm sorry, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, I'm afraid. All right. Counts? How many? Once. 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 So what's this probability? Probability of am, sorry, divided by probability of am. One by two. One by two, absolutely. Correct? Now, so that's how you figure out this probability, folks. All right? So basically, figure out the bigrams, multiply. You will get the probability of this sentence. Now, let's look at this. Of course, we do something similar, but let me pick one example. So, say, I given am. You see why I'm, I'm not putting am given I here. I'm calculating I given am because that's the sequence here. You see that folks? Because I follows am here. That's the sentence. All right. Now, can somebody help me? How do I write this? Your family. Am I divided by P of P of M? P of M. Or maybe let me take a different example. This is easier. Let me pick something else. Give me a moment. Let's say, okay, let's pick this. Probability of Dave given, sorry. Okay. Yep, tell me. Was it uh, Kyle? Go ahead. Probability mm -hmm. of what? Sorry, Dave. Sorry, Dave. Divided by? Mm -hmm. Probability of sorry. sorry. All right. Now go through the corpus. How many, how many occurrences of sorry, Dave, do you see in this corpus? Punctuation matters. Zero. Don't forget. Exactly. Right. So the number of occurrences of the word sorry, Dave, is zero. Right. Likewise, let's pick something else. Probability of. End of seven end of sentence 
given Dave. All right. Can somebody expand this for me? P of Dave, Dave yes. P of Dave, followed by end of sentence, divided by P of Dave. Dave. All right. Okay. Now, how many occurrences do you see where Dave is followed by end of sentence? Look at the corpus here. Sorry, One. but it's in the start of the sentence. So, oh, sorry, sorry. That's start. Sorry. Let me change that. I think I should change this. This is wrong. Give me a moment. I should have put... All right. So that should be... Um, End of sentence. I'll change this. End of sentence. And I'll make this. End of sentence. Okay. Now tell me. Look at this corpus. And tell me how many instances do you see where Dave is followed by end of sentence? Zero. Zero. That's right. Because in this corpus, Dave is only followed by what? Punctuation. The full stop. Which is full, full, full stop. stop. Exactly. So in this corpus, Dave is never followed by the end of sentence. So which means this is also, if you were to calculate it, this is also zero. So don't you see in the bigram model, if I were to ask you which one amongst these is a sentence all right is the first one a sentence or the second one a sentence i'm sorry this, this this is the first one and this is the second one then evidently you can conclude that the first one is a sentence how do you do that you actually use the bigrams you figure out the probabilities multiply the probabilities you will have a valid probability here. And in this case, the probability would have been zero, right? So you could have clearly told that the first one is a more plausible sentence and the second one isn't. Whereas, you remember folks, in the Unigram world, you couldn't come to a conclusion. Why? Because the previous word or the previous, when, when I use the word word, let me use the word token. It's much better, okay? Because even a punctuation is, though it isn't a word, it's definitely a token. When it comes to unigrams, the previous token didn't matter at all, which is why this combination's probability and this combination's probability was exactly the same in the unigram world. Whereas in the bigram world, they're not the same, they're different, all right? Uh, we'll talk about this a little later uh, in the next session. We'll start with this. But any questions, because it's, it's almost time for us, we usually keep 12 as a hard stop. Any questions so far, folks? All right. So if there aren't any, we'll stop for the day. Uh, thank you and catch you on uh, Friday, same time. See you, folks.